Hi, my name is Takuzo Kanre. I am a former A-level student and I graduated high school with straight A stars and I'm here to help you do the same or if not, just make A-level maths a little less challenging for you. So in this video, we'll be learning about transformations of functions. The syllabus points that we'll focus on states that we should understand and use transformations of the graph y equals f of x given by y equals f of x plus a y equals f of x plus a y equals a times f of x and y equals f of a times x and simple combinations of this so let's start with the first transformation y equals f of x plus a this is a translation in the y-axis by a units and let's look at an example of that so our example states that given that f of x is equal to x squared sketch the graph g of x is equal to f of x plus 2 so this is a translation in the y-axis by two units so as you can see here the gray graph is the graph of f of x and if we translate by two units the turning point moves from 0 to 2 in the y direction and this is now the translated graph so f of x plus a represents a translation in the y direction by a units now let's move on to the next transformation y equals f of x plus a so this time the a is inside the brackets so this is a translation in the x-axis by negative a units Notice how in the brackets we have plus a, but the translation in the x-axis is by negative a units. So it means whatever sign you have here in the brackets, when we're now determining how many units we've shifted by, you then change the sign. So if it's a positive sign here, it becomes a negative sign here. Let's look at an example of translation in the x-axis. Given that f of x is equal to x squared, sketch the graph of g of x is equal to f of x plus 2. So again, we say this means we are moving by negative 2 units. And this is a translation in the x axis. So as you can see, our graph of f of x is the gray graph. So if we start here at 0 and we move by negative 2 units in the x-axis, we end up here. And this is now our transformed graph. So g of x is a translation by negative 2 units in the x direction from f of x. Now let's move on to the next transformation. y equals a f of x. So this is a stretch in the y-axis by a stretch factor or sometimes referred to as a scale factor of a. And let's look at an example of that. Given that f of x is equal to x squared, sketch the graph g of x is equal to 2 f of x. This means that we're stretching our graph, we're stretching f of x in the y-axis by 2 units. So the gray graph is the original graph, that's f of x. And if you stretch it by a scale factor of 2, you end up with g of x. And so g of x is a stretch in the y direction by a stretch factor of 2 from f of x. Now let's move on to the next transformation. y equals f of a x. So now the a is inside the bracket. So this is a stretch in the x axis now. And the stretch factor is 1 over a. So whatever you have in the bracket, in this case, it's AX. So it means that our scale factor will be 1 over A. So say you add F of 1 over AX, your scale factor would be A. So you take the reciprocal of whatever you have inside the brackets. Now let's look at an example. Given that f of x is equal to x minus 2 squared, g of x is equal to f of 2x. So the gray graph is f of x. And now if we stretch it in the x-axis, you end up with the blue graph. So g of x is a stretch in the x direction by a stretch factor 
of half from f of x. So notice how this blue graph g of x is essentially half of the gray graph because it has been stretched by a scale factor of half. Okay, so now let's put all these transformations together. So this is a f of bx plus c plus d. So the a represents a stretch in the y-axis. The b represents a stretch in the x-axis. The c represents a translation in the x-axis. And the d is a translation in the y-axis. So this is just an example of a combined transformation where we've put all the transformations that we looked at above, we've put them together. That's usually how questions will be asked in the exam papers. They will give you a combination of transformations. They won't just give you one transformation. And something else to note is that the order in which transformations are applied is important. So here's the order in which transformations should be applied. So we always start with translation in the x direction. That's the first transformation. Then the second transformation is a stretch. Again, it's in the x direction. Then the third transformation is a reflection in the y direction, or rather in the y-axis. And the fourth transformation is a stretch in the y-axis. And the fifth transformation is a reflection in the x-axis. And the final transformation is a translation in the y-axis. So this is the order in which you should always apply transformations. So if a question is asking you in which order transformations are applied, so you look at this list and you start from the top, you always start with translation in the x-axis, followed by stretch in the x-axis, then reflection in the y-axis, stretch in the y-axis, reflection in the x-axis, and finally translation in the y-axis. Now let's look at an example of a combined transformation. Given that f of x is equal to x plus 2 squared minus 1, sketch the graph g of x is equal to 3 f of 2x plus 4 plus 1. Okay, so to do this, we'll start by sketching the graph of f of x first. Then we'll apply our transformations and sketch the graph. So this is the graph of f of x. So we we'll start by applying the translation in the x direction. Since it's in the x direction, instead of being by four units, our sign is positive. It means it's by negative four units. So that means from f of x, we're going to move four units in the negative x direction. And then we have a translation in the y direction by one unit. So that means we move here. We have translated. And then now we're going to stretch. So now we have a stretch in the y by a scale factor of three and a stretch in the x's by a scale factor. Remember if it's in the x, by a scale factor of half. So we have a stretch in the x direction by a stretch factor of half and a stretch in the y direction by a stretch factor of three. If you apply those transformations, you end up with g of x and that would be our final answer here. That's y equals g of x. Now let's look at some past paper questions. Number one, the graph of y equals f of x is transformed to the graph of y equals 1 plus f of half of x. 
describe fully the transformations which have been combined to give the resulting transformation. Okay, so we'll start inside the bracket here. You notice that we have if of half x. This means that we have a stretch in the x-axis by, again we said we take the reciprocal of whatever number is here, so by a scale factor of 2. So that's the first transformation that we have. And then this one here, that represents a translation in the y direction by one unit. And so here you can see we have our final answer being a stretch in the x direction by a stretch factor of two, followed by translation in the y direction by one unit. Now let's move on to number two. The graph of y equals f of x is transformed to the graph of y equals 2 f of x minus 1. Okay. Describe fully the two single transformations which have been combined to give the resulting transformation. Again, we'll start inside the bracket. In the bracket, we have x minus 1. So this is a translation in the x-axis. And again, we said we take the opposite sign. So that's translation in the x-axis by one unit. Since it's negative one here in the bracket, it means we're moving by positive one unit. And then we also have this two over here. That's a stretch in the y direction by a scale factor of 2. And as you can see on our final answer, we have a translation in the x direction by one unit followed by a stretch in the y direction with a stretch factor of 2. Now let's move on to number 3. Functions f and g are both defined for x as an element of all real values and are given by f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 5, g of x is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 13. a. By first expressing each of f of x and g of x in completed square form, express g of x in the form f of x plus p plus q. So before we even start we know that this positive p is a translation in the x axis and the q is a translation in the y axis okay now let's move on so if we complete the square for f of x, we end up with x minus 1 squared plus 4. And if we complete the square for g of x, we end up with x plus 2 squared plus 9. And again, we want to translate from negative 1 to positive 2. That's what p is. They said f of x plus p plus q. So that means we're moving from negative 1 to 2. If we are to look at a number line, we have negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So if we're moving from negative 1 to 2, we're moving by 1, 2, 3 units. That means our value for P will be 3. And if we're moving from 4, that's what Q is. From 4 to 9, we are moving by 9 minus 4 is 5. So Q will be equal to 5. And that will be your answer there. We've got P is 3, Q is 5. So G of X is equal to F of X plus 3 plus 5. 
Describe fully the transformations which transform the graph of y equals f of x to the graph of y equals g of x. So g of x is equal to f of x plus 3 plus 5. Here we have a translation in the x. Translation in the x direction. By, again we said we take the opposite sign. So since it's positive 3 here, it means by negative 3 units. And then this is a translation in the y by 5 units. So that's translation y axis by 5 units. And as you can see on our final answer here, there is a translation in the x direction by negative 3 units followed by a translation in the y direction by 5 units. So that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you want access to this PDF, you can find the link below in the description. You can also access more of my resources on my website. I've left a link to that in the description below. Thank you.